Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part five and the final part for this series, Microservices in Go with Heroku and Postgres. We've finished building our microservice and now we're gonna provision a Postgres add-on and deploy onto Heroku. Make sure you hit the like, comment, and subscribe button for the channel. Uh, it helps me out a ton and lets me know you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching. Let's get into the video. All right, I've gone ahead and signed into Heroku here and we're just on the landing page where we can see apps. Uh, let's create a new app for our microservice. Let's give it a name. I'm just gonna call this Dev Topics PSQL. And we're gonna click Create App. And this will set us up here. Um, the only remaining piece we need to do, let's go into Resources here. And this is where we can search for all of Heroku's add-ons, um, I believe we can click this here. And if you'd like, um, you can browse through and see all the offerings they have uh, for data stores. Um, they've got several kinds of DBs. They've got Redis for caching. Um, they've got MySQL. Uh, I believe they have a Mongo, um, Mongo add-on as well. We want this Heroku Postgres one. So let's go back. We'll just type in Postgres and we'll select Heroku Postgres here. And there's a couple of different plans you can do. Starting out, um, what I really love about Heroku is that you can get most stuff for free. So we'll click the hobby dev for free and we'll submit order. Uh, when you do that, you'll need to have a credit card on file. I've already added one. Um, this is totally free. You're not gonna get charged to build anything. And we see here, um, attached as database. So that's attached to the app. And what that means is we go into settings, under config vars here, you can click reveal config uh, vars, and you'll see we have this database URL attached to our app now. So every time we deploy to um, DevTopics, PSQL, and our application starts up, we're gonna have this database URL environment variable. And we can see here, it's in this format. Um, it's a little bit different than what we've seen with our Docker Compose. And the last little remaining piece of code um, the last code change we'll need to do here is getting our um, getting a database connection to work with this type of URL. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And now let's jump back into Goland and get to work. All right, so we're back here in Goland. So if you remember, I believe in part one, long time ago, we set up database URL, this environment variable. Um, and if you remember, Heroku provisioned us this database URL environment variable, the same one. Whoops, quit that. So we want to now actually start using this in our app. Right now it's wired up to point to DB, but it's actually not even used anywhere inside of our application. Um, inside of db.go, we just have this hard coded to use this string DB, which because we're running inside of Docker, DB actually is the address of this container. It's the actual like address. If you're running this locally on the network, you see some kind of like IP address, right? You'd see something more like that. But we're in Docker land, so we see DB. So we want to have two different types. Um, we're gonna need two different types of connections, one of our local, one of our in prod. So let's separate that out here. So we can do var opts. Either way, we're gonna end up with this opts object, pg.options. And we want to have an error, some kind of optional error as well. Okay, so either way, we're going to end up with this opt and an error, and we're going to use the opt. All right, so let's take this. I'm going to cut that out and just put opts in. Okay, so if we're in production, and for this, I'm going to make a new environment variable, and we'll call it um, env, just environment. And if we're in production, that will be set to prod. So we'll set this on Heroku. If we're in production, we're gonna do one thing. Otherwise, that means we're in dev. So we're just gonna say anything that has an environment other than production is just dev. That's what we're gonna decide. You might have different environments, maybe you have staging, test, whatever, um, that's up to you. So opts, in the case we're just running in dev, <clears throat> We just want our old opts, just like that, and it'll get put down here, and we'll connect with that, okay? Uh, I see one error here. It's not the first time we've defined the error anymore. Otherwise, if we're in prod, if we're in prod, we actually wanna make use of this database URL, 
from the environment variable. So we can do that with os.getN and database URL. That gives us our database URL that Heroku has set for us. Now, how do we use that? So it's, it's in that super long string format, right? It looks kind of like this, right? It's in this format. So obviously, where's the user? Where's the password? Um, they're all in here, but we don't want to have to like manually cut little pieces of this out. So PG, the library we're using, Go PG has a nice helper for this. Um, it's called parse URL. So it takes this kind of long format URL and it parses it into options that can use uh, connect. So it kind of does all the heavy lifting for us. So let's take this, pass it in. So that's the URL. And this gives us an opt and also an error. Now, if we do get that error, we just want to return out of this function. So let's handle the error. <clears throat> and otherwise, we're all set up. So otherwise, we're going to connect to the database there. OK, so this only happens. We only use this special parse URL um, when we're in prod. So let's actually set that in Heroku. So let's say end, and we'll say prod. And we'll just hit add. All right, so we should be good to go. And just to test this out, we don't have the environment variable set here, right? We don't have in set. So let's just do Docker compose. We'll just restart this here, make sure everything is still working as expected. So this should still be using this um, local database here. Cool. So we see we're still able to connect to the local database inside of Docker Compose, and we're able to run our migrations. So everything's working as expected. Let's bring this down. OK, so the last piece here is to actually deploy this onto Heroku. So let's get going with that. All right, so deploying is pretty straightforward. Uh, we can go over to the Deploy tab. And we'll scroll down a little bit here. So I already have the uh, Heroku CLI installed. If you don't, uh, click this link and just follow the guide to install it. So we are going to be using the container registry. We built our microservice with Docker. And they have a nice little guide right here. So Heroku login. I already ran this one. And they just make sure that we have Docker running locally. We do. So the next step, uh, we just log into the container registry. Cool. Login succeeded. And now we can just push up our Docker image. All right. So we made it. Um, that took a couple of minutes for me. So no worries if this is slow. Um, if that's a little bit slow for you, um, it'll finish. OK, so we pushed our container. The next step is to release it. So with Heroku's container registry, you can push up a bunch. You'll have a bunch of containers with different versions. And then you choose, uh, you can release just the latest version or specific versions of that container. OK, so let's run release. And this is actually going to start up our app for the first time. Um, it's, it, it doesn't care about this Docker Compose anymore. Um, it built this Docker file, um, and it pushed that Docker file up to Heroku's container registry. So this will release it. Um, this is kind of actually deploying our microservice for the first time. So let's run that. Cool. So we see releases, uh, releasing images to web. Um, all good there. So next step, um, we'll go to more and click view logs. So this is um, a place you'll be spending a lot of time, uh, a lot of time at on Heroku, um, just viewing your app's logs. All right, so we see release v5 was created by DevTopics. That's us. And let's see here. Sorry, not v5. Um, this was some previous testing stuff here, so this one failed. Um, but we see here release uh, v6 was created, um, deployed web, and scaled up. So we actually scaled up the little microservice. One, one server now is running it. And we started the process, and we see that version is two. So our migration scripts um, are up and running. Uh, I've already ran this one time previously. Um, one time previously, just testing things out. 
So if this is the first time you're running it, um, you should see that um, migrated from version zero to two. Um, but here we've already migrated our version, so it's at version two. And we see our little log statement, we're up and running. So let's test it out. So we go into settings. Um, here's our URL. This is where our app lives. And let's hop back in and we can actually curl stuff from here. So curl. Um, and let's try that. All right, so we just curled our homes endpoint. And if you remember, uh, we go into API here. Uh, slash homes, just the root one here. Um, just the root one with a git, with the git method is uh, retrieves all homes. Um, and if we do homes slash like a home ID, we should get like a 404 not found. Yeah, so we see PG no result, uh, no rows in result set. So that's what we're looking for. And let's create a home. So this is that request body we've been working with this whole time. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So curl post and we want this for our URL. And it's rec.json. And let's go ahead and parse this, type this into JQ. And let's see what we get. Okay, so yeah, that would have failed. We did homes slash one, two, three. So we don't have a handler for that. So let's fix that. And let's run it. All right. So that time, um, things worked out. So before we probably got like a endpoint not found or something, exception. Um, here, when we have the right endpoints, uh, we get success true, no error, and we see there's our home we just made. Let's create another one. Price, save that, and let's run it again. There's ID two, um, there's our other home, and let's test out agent ID. So let's do 500. So if you remember, we just have one agent right now, and that has an ID of one. So any other agent should fail. So let's try to create with an agent that doesn't exist. Yeah, so we tried to insert a record on a row on a table homes and it violated the foreign key constraint homes agent ID foreign key. So that one failed. So now if we do get all homes, there's all of our homes. And we see it's working just like we expected. So that's it. That's our that's our app right there. That's our brief little microservice with Postgres. And you can see just how quick that was um really deploying that so once we got all the coding done right that was the long part uh writing out the microservice itself that's the long part but actually like making an app um provisioning our postgres resource setting up setting up all the environment variables and then finally actually deploying our app right that was very quick um so that's kind of the the power there of heroku um it lets you get up and running just really really fast um you don't have to worry about, for example, with Amazon Web Services, setting up an IAM role, getting the API tokens, um, access to specific resources, um, all that kind of stuff. Don't have to worry about any of it. Um, Heroku is just a simple way to hack something together and get it going. So if you're just testing out a little startup idea or just a weekend project, um, use Heroku. And when you start scaling and running into issues like that, um, after you've proved your idea and proved your concept, then it's probably a good idea to move over to a bigger host and a bigger provider. All right, so that um, closes up this series, uh, microservices in Go uh, with Heroku and PostgreSQL. Hope you learned a bunch here in the series. Uh, thank you so much for watching and please again, like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Uh, really helps me out. Um, gives me a lot of encouragement to keep going and making more videos for you. Uh, hope you're able to learn something from here and thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.